Today, let's talk about the current state of DOS emulation on the Apple Silicon Macs. We'll be looking at several DOSBox works as well as the vanilla DOSBox. The main focus today will be performance, but before that, we need to talk about why performance can be a concern on Apple Silicon Macs. If you don't already know, with the release of the first Apple Silicon Macs, Apple also released Rosetta 2, allowing x86 applications to run on Apple Silicon Macs. Geekbench 5, when running via Rosetta 2, shows a roughly 25% of single-core performance reduction. While this number looks pretty good, for emulators, it's another story. This is because Rosetta 2 works in two modes, and emulators unfortunately have to rely on the less optimal mode called JIT, or just-in-time compilation. When a 64-bit x86 macOS application is launched for the first time, Rosetta 2 comes in and recompiles the application binary into a native ARM64 binary, store it at a location private to macOS. So in our case, if we run the x86 version of DOSBox, it gets recompiled into an ARM64 binary when it's first launched. This is the ahead-of-time mode, or the optimal mode for Rosetta 2. However, when DOSBox loads and runs a DOS application, DOSBox itself will recompile parts of the 16 or 32-bit DOS application binary into native 64-bit x86 instruction blocks. What DOSBox does here is actually also JIT. Then it will attempt to run some of those 64-bit x86 instructions. Now Rosetta 2 must kick in again to convert these 64-bit x86 instructions into ARM64 instructions on the fly, so that they can be executed on Apple Silicon. This is another JIT. So combined with the previous JIT, when we run a DOS application on an Intel version of DOSBox running on top of Rosetta, we're doing a double JIT. So as much as Rosetta 2 yields good performance for most Intel applications, emulators are a big exception. While for some DOS applications, it is fine to just use the x86 version of DOSBox, some other applications and games can be too demanding for the additional workload caused by the double JIT. If DOSBox itself is built natively for Apple Silicon, the second JIT done by Rosetta will be gone, leaving only one JIT to deal with. But this is not a simple recompilation of the DOSBox source code. Someone has to write a recompiler to convert x86 instructions into ARM64 code blocks. Now, it has been a year and a half since the release of the first Apple Silicon Max. We actually do have a few versions of native ARM64 DOSBox works to choose from. Do they provide the same experience as the Intel counterparts running on an Intel processor? We will find out in today's video. Here, I have a list of DOSBox forks we will be looking at today. If you know some other forks that work well on Apple Silicon, leave a comment down below. First off, you can download the vanilla DOSBox from their website. While it is a universal binary, it is a universal binary with 32-bit and 64-bit Intel and PowerPC binaries, not Apple Silicon. To get the ARM64 version of the vanilla DOSBox, we will have to resort to Homebrew. Install Homebrew, then install DOSBox. Then we have DOSBox X. Go to their website and we can download both the Intel version and the Apple Silicon version. This fork has a rich feature set, as well as a densely packed UI providing almost all the commonly used features, so that you don't have to modify the configuration file or memorize keyboard shortcuts. After that, we have a new Boxer fork. The original Boxer itself is a DOSBox fork, but it has been abandoned and cannot run even on top of Rosetta since it's a 32-bit application. The original Boxer was very popular at some point and is bundled in some games sold on GOG. Nowadays, we'll have to use the new fork to get it to run on a modern macOS release. Unfortunately, we do have an Apple Silicon release. It does have some stability issues, but if you decide to compile from the source, you can apply my patch to resolve the crash happening when you close the DOS prompt window. I'll put a link to the patch in the video description. Like DOSBox X, Boxer integrated some commonly used features to its UI, but Boxer was made with macOS UI philosophy in mind, providing only the necessary features with the UI, and try not to over-engineer things. It is also the only one in today's list that doesn't suffer from UI scaling problems on Retina display. Then comes DOSBox staging. Its UI looks like the vanilla DOSBox, which means you will have to resort to the configuration file and keyboard shortcuts. However, it has very good performance compared to the vanilla version, as we will see in a minute. 
Now we can start looking at their performance. The two major questions we will try to answer are 1. Do the ARM64 versions of these DOSBox forks provide the same or higher level of performance as their Intel counterparts? 2. How much performance do we lose if we choose to use Rosetta 2 to run the Intel versions on Apple Silicon? Today's test will be done using Doom, Quick, and Quick 2 for DOS. Doom uses fixed 320 by 200 resolution, while Quick and Quick 2 will be tested using both 320 by 200 and 640 by 480 resolutions. First of all, we need to establish baselines. This means we will test the Intel versions of these DOSBox forks on an Intel Mac. Today, we'll be using a 2019 13-inch MacBook Pro with two Thunderbolt ports. This machine has a Core i5-8257U processor. Geekbench 5 single core sits at 929 compared to M1 1703. Cinebench R23 single core 998 compared to M1 1503. So this in theory is a much slower CPU compared to Apple M1. Keep that in mind when we look at the numbers. Here are the results. In Doom, Boxer takes the lead with an impressive 175 average FPS, followed by DOSBox staging with 124 FPS and DOSBox X with 112 FPS. The vanilla DOSBox only produced 98 FPS. In Quick, tested with 320 x 200 resolution, Boxer again takes the lead with 162 FPS, followed by DOSBox staging and DOSBox X. However, this time the gap between Boxer and DOSBox staging is smaller. The vanilla DOSBox gave a very poor result with only 57 FPS on average. Switching to 480p, the gap between Boxer and DOSBox staging is further reduced with almost identical results. DOSBox X also closes its gap with Boxer and DOSBox staging. The vanilla DOSBox again give a very poor result. Quick 2 at 320 x 200 resolution provides similar results to Quick 1. Now here the gap between DOSBox X and DOSBox staging is larger than Quick 1. Moving to 480p, interestingly, DOSBox staging now takes the lead, providing 18% more FPS. The vanilla DOSBox meanwhile has an unplayable 14 FPS. The takeaway from the results on the Intel machine is that the vanilla DOSBox performs poorly in all tests compared to its forks. Boxer takes the lead in all tests except Quick 2 at 480p, in which DOSBox staging gave the best performance. DOSBox X always sits between the vanilla DOSBox and the second best. With the baseline established, now let's take a look at the Apple Silicon versions of the binaries. These tests were done on 13-inch M1 Micro Pro, though all the M1 variants provide similar single-core performance, hence the results should be similar for all the M1, M1 Pro, M1 Max, and M1 Ultra machines. For all the M1 test results, I'll put the best Intel performance on top as reference. First of all, Doom. Both DOSBox staging and Boxer provide performance exceeding the best Intel result. But keep in mind that the Intel version was tested on a much slower CPU. DOSBox X almost matches the Intel best result. The vanilla DOSBox gave 82 FPS, which is actually worse than the Intel version at 98 FPS. This, however, is not an isolated case, as we will see later in this video. The ARM64 version of the vanilla DOSBox always runs slower than the Intel version. Quick at 320 x 200, here we encountered problem with DOSBox X. Quick crashed on the ARM64 DOSBox X, so did Quick too. I filed a bug report regarding Quick crashing on DOSBox X. The answer I got was that the main contributor to the project doesn't have an M1 machine, and the x86 version still has some advantages. But unfortunately for our purpose, this means DOSBox X is missing in action in 80% of our tests. But let's move on to the results of the other forks. Boxer again is taking a lead here, but it's nowhere near the Intel version's impressive 162 FPS result. Meanwhile, the vanilla version was only able to give an embarrassing 39 FPS. Moving on to 480p, DOSBox staging takes over the lead with 37 FPS, but again, this is nowhere near the Intel result sitting at 67 FPS. Meanwhile, the vanilla DOSBox gave 11 FPS, making its way to the slideshow territory. Quick 2, 320 x 200, the results of Boxer and DOSBox staging are very close, but again, much slower compared to the Intel best result. The vanilla version is not able to provide even half of the FPS compared to DOSBox staging. Quick 2 480p, similar story with both Boxer and DOSBox staging, dropping below 35 FPS. 
This is around only 60% of the performance of the Intel best result. Meanwhile, the frame rate of Vanilla DOSBox dropped to a single digit at 9 FPS. If we just look at the numbers, these Apple Silicon results are disappointing. So now the interesting question is, what will happen with Intel versions running on Rosetta? Of course, they should be worse than running on a real Intel processor, but remember the Intel processor we used is much slower than M1. However, you also need to remember that with Rosetta running DOSBox, we are suffering from the double jet problem I mentioned before. To find out the answer, I rerun the tests with the Intel versions running on top of Rosetta. Here are the results. The results of Doom with ARM64 versions are already pretty good. The results of Intel versions running on Rosetta sit between the Core i5 and M1 for DOSBox X and DOSBox staging. For Boxer, Core i5 and Rosetta produce the same result, a bit slower than the native ARM64. The Vanilla DOSBox has the results reversed compared to the others. So we can see even though x86 applications running under Rosetta are supposed to yield worse performance compared to running on an actual x86 processor, the Intel processor used for the comparison is just too slow compared to M1. Doom is the happy scenario for native ARM64 binaries. Now let's move to Quake and Quake 2, where the native ARM64 binary struggled against the Intel native counterparts, especially at higher resolutions. Quake at 320 by 200, here we see huge performance hit for Rosetta, producing less than half of the frame rates compared to ARM64 native binaries for DOSBox staging and boxer, and less than one third of the frame rate of the Cry 5 results. Similar situation with 480p, one third of the frame rate compared to Cry 5. This is also true for Quick 2 at 320 by 200, one third of the frame rate compared to Cry 5, even if the native ARM64 results have smaller gap to native Intel. Exact same story for 480p results as well. So we can see, even though the results from native ARM64 binaries are somewhat disappointing, running these Intel binaries using Rosetta is even more disappointing. This proves the problem of double jet indeed is not negligible. Those were a lot of numbers to go through, so what are the takeaways here? First, the native ARM64 binaries seem to yield better performance compared to Intel binaries running on the Intel processor when the frame rate is higher. Or in other words, the easier the DOS application is, the better ARM64 binaries perform. This could be caused by the efficiency of the recompiled code with regard to different workloads. For example, when profiling Doom and Quick 1, I found out that Doom has way more CPU cycles spent on preparing the execution thread for delay. By removing the sleep for function, the delay function essentially becomes a busy loop, eliminating the overhead of the sleep for function with the price of a full CPU core usage at all times. We can see with the hack, the Intel binary sees a much bigger improvement than the ARM64 binary. And as frame rate goes down, the improvement also goes down as there are less calls to the sleep function. So the sleep for function in this case is sensitive to frame rate. There might be other frame rate sensitive functions which ultimately combine together make the Intel binary suffer from high frame rate scenarios. Second, as I already mentioned before, the performance of native ARM64 binaries is somewhat disappointing, especially considering the Intel processor has only 55% of the single core performance of M1, according to Geekbench 5, and 60% of the single core performance according to Cinebench R23. It's worth mentioning that recompiling Intel instructions to Intel instructions benefits from enormous advantages. As we can see from the profile, the ARM64 version of Boxer spent a lot of cycles doing things otherwise not needed with the Intel binaries. Thirdly, the native ARM64 version of the vanilla DOS box gave the worst result for every single test I did, even worse than the Intel vanilla binary running on Rosetta. It turns out the ARM64 vanilla DOS box you get from Homebrew is not capable of doing dynamic recompilation. Instructions are interpreted. Interpretation is supposed to be very slow, and in this case, even slower than the Intel version of the vanilla DOS box running on Rosetta. And lastly, DOS box X crashed in Quick and Quick 2, making it the one that I do not recommend, not because of performance reasons, but rather its usability. So what's the verdict? Let's start from the obvious things. DOSBox X is missing in action in the M1 native tests. 
there is little reason to use it, really. Especially when it does work, it doesn't deliver the level of performance of Boxer and DOS box staging. But there is one very specific reason why you might want to use it or use the Intel version of it using Rosetta when the native ARM64 version crashes your application. DOSBox X is the only one we look at today that supports 3DFX Voodoo emulation. For example, Tomb Raider here works beautifully even with the Intel version of DOSBox X running on Rosetta. We also see that there really is zero reason to go with the vanilla version of DOSBox, especially when the native ARM64 version doesn't even use dynamic recompiling. For the rest two, namely Voxer and DOSBox staging, I think even though the ARM64 DOSBox forks yield worse performance than the Intel binaries running even on a slower Intel processor, the performance is still really good for almost all the use cases. Quick2 was never officially released for MS-DOS, and what I used for the test is an unofficial conversion. So Quick will be one of the highest-end DOS games you can find, and both Boxer and DOSBox staging are able to deliver over 30 frames per second performance. Out of these two, I do recommend Boxer more than DOSBox staging, since it has much better UI, so you don't have to use the configuration file. It's also the only one who doesn't suffer from scaling problems with the Rana display. The only shortcoming I encountered with Boxer is the lack of video capturing capability. All other DOSBox forks provide this feature, though the video captured by DOSBox X has its color all messed up. So this is all for this video about DOSBox forks on the Apple Silicon Max. It was a lot of information that we went over today. I hope this video is useful to you. I will put the links to all the DOSBox forks I mentioned today in the video description down below. Leave a comment if you have any questions or if you have some other DOSBox forks to recommend. Hit the like button if you liked the video and subscribe to the channel for future contents. I will see you in the next video.